um, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all honor and glory and praises to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, as well as double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Also, double honors and salutation to all you Akims that are doing the work and pushing the Lord's word in truth and sincerity. Also, double honors to the camp led of the Gentile, this Akadama Dot. And today, through the Spirit, you know, I would like to make a video. Um, I was happening to be pondering, you know, um, and thinking. And then the Spirit hit me, and I did, you know, went on the computer and just did a little search. And, you know, I, I came across something in that something um, interesting that might um, edify for um, you Akim out there, you know, and to the world, basically about this truth um about israel being scattered you know across the four globe of, of of the whole earth you know and um before i get started i would just like to bring out this um first precept you know and it was in deuteronomy chapter 28 which is um, one of the curse that the lord said he was gonna do to the children of israel if they didn't follow the statutes and commandments so this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee amongst all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even woods and stone. Right. So with that being said, um, what I have come across are these tribes in Thailand, in southern part of Thailand, which are called the, the, the Mani tribe. And before I get into it, I want to show you um, what kind, what, you know, what they look like. So when you type in the Mani tribe here, and you go to Google Images, and this is what you get, these pictures here. These are the Mani tribe that's living in the southern part of Thailand, in the forest, um, I believe, yeah. So I'm going to enlarge it real quick. And as you, as you can see, uh, clearly see, that these are jakes you know um they got the you know the woolly hair you know the the so-called negro complexion you know and um also um let me click some more got these it's like if the picture is not coming out clear but these are some of the pictures you see boom you know and you know, through the spirit, I thought it was powerful. So, cause I never knew, but hey, man, the, those those uh, this really prove that you know those curses are real, and the word of the Yahweh Bashim Yahshai are real. All right. So um, I'm gonna go to this website called the Original People dot org. Your brother could check it out. You know, if you want to go further into it. Yeah, these are the pictures right here. Mani tribe. It says right here. It was published in July 7, 2013, so, you know, it's been a while, but, you know, it's still a good source. Mani people, ethnic Negrito tribe of Thailand, right? And they give you a two-part um, documentary on it. One is, like, 14 minutes, and the other one is 12 minutes, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, let me read what it is. The Mani are an ethnic group of Thailand. they are the only Negro group in Thailand and speak Mani, also called the Tonga Kinsiu or Mas, a Man Khmer language in the Aslian language group. It is thought they once spoke a language similar to the Adamanese language, but then adopted the language of the Man Khmer people around them. The Mani are a hunting and gathering society they built temporary huts of bamboos with roof made of banana leaf they hunt many types of animals and consume many different kinds of vegetables and fruits they wear simple clothes made of materials such as bamboo leaf they are familiar with many different spices of me um, med medicinal medicinal herbs Total population of the Manique is about 300 people, and it says um, they are familiar with many different um, sp spices, spices of species or spices of um, medicinal herbs, and you know 
Israel back in the ancient world is you know we were into the herbs too so you know that's one of the things that kind of proves that they, they are Israelite you know by nature you know through spirit that they you know good with herbs all right um and it also goes into um more articles I believe about it which I'll go into a little bit you know I'll hit some key points because I went over it through it and it has some good point that matches you know some of the curses in scripture that pertaining to Israel you know and they also further prove that they're Israelite all right but um first you know I'll, I'll play I'll, I'll also like to play the video but I'm gonna play the first part you know for you brothers to see <laughs> <laughs> Amid the Kalbantat mountain range in the Manung district of the Satun province, a group of the it says Manung Satun Province. Uh, let me go back to see. So, so like, yeah, I might, you know, stop the video through spirit. You know, if I have something that the spirit, you know, come through to, in mind to bring out something, you know, I'll, I'll stop and say a little something, you know, but um, it says. Amid the Kalbantat mountain range in the Manung district. Manung Satun. So I got the map here, the exact location. So this is the map of Thailand right here. But their location is in the southern part of Thailand. So let me make that bigger. Um, so when you go down, it's right here, Satun. That's the location that they're in, the forest. So it's pretty, you know, down south. Mostly forests, you know, jungles and such like that. Um, just let me continue. District of the Satun province, a group of the Negrito ethnic tribe has been dwelling in the jungle for thousands of years. Academic reports state that their descendants had migrated to the southernmost area of Thailand and the Malay Peninsula before any others. However, they've managed to preserve the characteristics and wisdom of the ancient civilization to this very day. These jungle dwellers are known by many names. Semang, Sakai, Ngo, Konba, and Mani. So right there where it just says um they call by many different names that's also part of the curse for all Israel basically but you know to, through the spirit in the video you know say they call them by different name and that's part of the curse which I'm gonna go to which is in um same chapter Deuteron Deuteronomy 28 verse 30 two, Oh, 37 right here and thou shalt become an astonishment a proverb and a byword amongst all nations whether the Lord shall lead thee so and also actually let me go to the article now and when you know go to this article it does mention that too just to get more you know uh, better clear view on it uh, let me go see where I found it okay so look right here. Even this year, a money ban from Terang, Terang was carted off to Phuket. And Phuket is a destination in southern Thailand too as well where it's a, mostly like a, a resort, like a tourist spot that they um, go to. That's number one spot that they usually uh, go to when they come like to Thailand. Um, that's the latest tourist sideshow. So that's, you know, the curse astonishment for an extra... 800 baht, you know, client on elephant track tracks could ride past the original Pai Mai village where Mani dressed in sanitized red sarong and fired blowpipes on cue.
for the amusement of international tourists. So when you go to the curse, you know, it says thou shalt be an astonishment. So you know, when other nations they look at them with astonishment, like they um not even a human being, you know, like it says right here, real quick. Um and it was 1994, my first and saddest encounter with Thailand, last nomadic forest dweller, it saddened me to realize that even in Thailand, one of the world's most tolerant societies, the first people of this land were viewed as children of a lesser god. But according to um, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, I believe, that chapter where, actually, let me, Yeah, Deuteronomy 7, 7 and 6, where it says that we are a holy people. We're not the children of no lesser God. We are the children of uh, the Most High. Contrary to what, you know, how these people view, but they don't know, you know. So, um, let me continue. Some tourists, for well, culture that teaches society, culture, culture. Okay, down. So, might as well just go into the... So many original remain in mystery, black complexion and kinky hair have lead research researchers to link them to African Negroes, Malaysian, Australian, Aboriginal and even people peoples of Central India. Whatever their racial origin, the money or most marginalized society on the peninsula today, pushed out of their preferred lowland forest habitat by lodging and agriculture expansion, they now seek refuge like the last remaining wildlife in the small pocket of protected montan forests in Malaysia where they live within Taman Ningara National Park. They are known as Orang Asli original people recognized that a mixture of breeding result in the Proto-Malay and eventually the Malay people of today. In Thailand they are given a less noble name so that go back to the curse as well you know by words and proverbs like many aboriginal people, the name they call themselves, Manik, Manik simply means the people, but Sakai, the name mostly commonly used by Thai, is derived from the Malay word for savage of, or slave. Look at that. Crazy. And you know, that's how society today view Israel, you know, especially you so-called um, southern tribe, you know, due to the so-called, thanks to the so-called devil Esau you know the Edomite so called white race who put that image and portray that image on, on, on the world about you know where you got the history that they come from it's mostly slave but that's you know not true we were kings and royal royalty when you actually read the scriptures this contemptuous label plays into the hands of those who exploit these shy and passive people right let me get this point too. It says, in Thai society, black skin usually means lower social status. Just not in Thai, anywhere, you know? Because back in the U.S., they, they they look at if you, you know, have a certain skin complexion, especially of a so-called black skin complexion, they, you know, they look at you very low, all right? So, it's just not here, okay? That because um that curse is for all Israel. If you put uh, Israelite, that curse is 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 on you. All right, that the many hunt gather their food also diminish them in society central on agriculture and animal lifestyle. Okay, that's that's just just some of the things that. Okay. Oh, also just one last thing I wanted to get where I thought was interesting. Um. Uh, one of the characteristic that also proved that they were um. That they're uh, Israelite, because you know, um, going back to Jacob in, in, in Genesis, the, the characteristic of Esau and Jacob. I know Esau was the uh, uh, a cunning hunter, and Jacob was like a dweller in the tents. Which I also gonna bring out that scripture, but I, I just wanna get it real quick if I find it. So I can bear with me. Um, Mm. 
swag gear, swag gear. If your brother want, you know, do more in depth research on it, you can, you know, feel free to, you know, but, you know, through spirits, wonder to bring this out, you know, just to edify that Israel was scattered all over the world, you know. Um, okay, here we go. It says right here, the many spend much of their days lodging in shelters a top platform of poles set on 30 degree angle to ensure a more comfortable elevated head position they have a remarkable amount of leisure time which they spend relaxing relaxing chatting cuddling their children or tossing a few yam like root on fire on the fire to roast right man and, and, and that's jake you know you know jake like to chill they, that's all they like to do is just relaxing chilling and you know doing all these type of things and you know in Genesis 25 verse 27 it says and the boys grew when Esau was a cunning hunter a man of the field you know he, he liked to be in the field doing whatever he had to do you know um, hunting and all this type of stuff and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents and you know when you read that it, it fits him this is um, you read this part right here it, it's, it's a plain seemed like a plain thing you know and also when you read in the beginning the, the features of the many um people you know when they wear you know plain what well, simple clothing it says right here simple clothes you know we jacob you know we plain not in a bad term but you know we 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 not like Esau or too technical or, 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 or try to do too much you know we just you know just easy you know just chilling you know like we like to be dwelling in the tents relaxing you know not to do too much and you know so that's one of the things so yeah with that uh, i just wanna i'll go back and play play the video Kai has built a habitat on a valley at Mu 6, Tambon Palm Patana, in the Manung district, where he is living with his wife, his eight children, two son in laws, and two grandchildren. Kai said that he has lived in the area since he was born. At the time, Kalbantad mountain range was so rich that the Manis would go out to hunt and to find wild food easily. The abundance of nature was also the key ingredient to the Manis nomadic living. <laughs> They built temporary shelters using easy methods. And right, um, it says there, you know, they, they, these people, the Mani tribe, they really depend on the forest, you know, and the environment for food, you know, for hunt out for food and stuff like that. And you know, I, I there's a curse that says um, about that too. Hold on, let me find it right here. Verse Deuteron Deuteronomy 28, verse 33, The fruit of thy land and thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. And that's what's happening to these uh, that tribe, you know. They, they, uh, you know, they're saying that there's barely food right now for them due to also, you know, that sign, that sign that the Lord is showing, bringing the famine, you know, in all the lands, of, you know, in, in, in the earth for his coming. But, you know, just saying that curse, it says, um, Nations, which nation is that? These tourists that goes over there, you know, for the reason all those food got to be taken out, you know, so so the people got to gather those uh, fruit or animals, whatever it is, for these tourists that come over there so they can eat it, but without you know knowing that there's people in these jungles that actually need it more than than those people to survive, you know. Materials found in the forests. Its structure and beams were made of three big tree trunks, while nyapa and banana leaves were weaved to make roofs. Inside the hut, bamboo sticks are arranged closely together to make beds. They light a bonfire to keep mosquitoes and other wild animals away from their homes. A day in a man's life is so simple and stress-free. When they wake up in the morning, the men go into the woods to hunt. 
while the women and small children look for wild potatoes. <laughs> Raw papayas ubiquitously found in the valleys are often boiled to make a lunch meal. Futuristic of these uh, people is Jake, man. They, there's no denying it. You know, the, the, the woody hair and just the complexion. <laughs> Kai is Gamnan, or the head of this group, but he stressed that he wasn't a real leader. <laughs> The manis don't know their age because they don't count days or numbers. Instead, they rely on nature for their timekeeping. Timekeeping. After the hunts, the men come home and divide what they've gathered into portions to equally feed all members of the group. This sharing characteristic brought harmony to the group. So, you know, that's the spirit too. You know, they said, you know, um, in the spirit, how they share with each other. I think um, I'm not too um, sure on the scripture, but I know I'm sure there's a scripture on that, how Israel, you know, treated each other, you know, as, as, as people in the tribe. But, you know, that shows you, like, love that neighbor as that self. But, um, yeah, the, um, that's too, you know. Nature offers the manis exciting and valuable life lessons. ones are taught to cook, to hunt, and to take care of themselves at a very young age. Oh. 
bunu. This newborn Manny began to walk when she was six months old. Freedom is at her reach to enjoy. You can see the curses is real, man. It, it's, it's, to, to some Israel that scattered, you know, it affects them, you know, a lot more. Because, you know, brothers in, 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 in the West and certain part, you know, they're able to have... Um, Lord is able to bless them still, you know, with a little, you know, something, shelter, you know, a little good job, income, you know, and etc. But, you know, you just take a look at some of these people that scatter around, like tribes and stuff that be in the jungle. Them curses is, is on them heavy. You know, they barely even have any clothes and, and stuff like that, like, as you can see. So, you know, hey, it is, it's, 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 that curse is it's no joke, man. The simple logic they have conforms to the abundant surroundings in which they live. But with gradual changes that are occurring within the forest and the nearby area, their way of life today will not help them to live for tomorrow, or more importantly, for the future. Basically just like gentrification, you know, out there, you know, kicking all you um, Jakes out and bringing in the, the, the other nation, you know, to live. You know, that's what's going on here too. More tourists is coming in. So, you know, they, they kick, like, you know, they got to kick these people out because, you know, with more tourists coming in, they built certain stuff on around their area and such. All right. Over the years after the construction of the linkage road of Latnu and Tungwa districts was completed, Many villagers from the outside world began to settle their homes in areas that were once forests. Some of them took possessions of the forest lands and some wild plants as their own, which in turn has created hardships for the hunting and food gathering of the manis. <laughs> The incidents have forced the group to rethink their moving habits. <laughs> The land Kai and his family are now living on was donated by a resort entrepreneur, Kiat Nimduang. The place is a heritage for the family that often moves into the jungle to visit their relatives or to live in a cave during the monsoon season and have a place to live when they come back. The startling change that occurred in the forest and the developments in Manang village have introduced the manis to use materials from the city in their daily lives. Food containers, dining utensils and instant noodles were used in households. Man, man, the Lord jacked the hell out of our people, man. That's why we really gotta, we really need to pray hard for the Lord to make his way back you know and and and, and bring us back to, to how we were you know back to what we really are a nation of kings and royal priests you know as it says in exodus you know because our people are kings and queens and princes all right not no damn slave savage and, and, and low life type stuff right
so eh. as well as lighters which differ greatly to ancient lighting techniques in the old days, they used a vine rubbing against a drilling hole on a large bamboo stick covered with cotton wool to light a fire. It takes more time and energy and can break easily. Even though modernity has played an increasing role in the infrastructure of the group, the way of hunting has remained the same. A male Manny uses a blowpipe or bolau in the Manny language to hunt wild animals. The weapon is made of bamboo and is comprised of two parts. One part is the blower and the other is the dart. This morning, the three brothers are now going into the jungle to find the bamboo necessary to make some more bolaos. It takes about 30 minutes from their homes to the bamboo bush. The oldest in the group is acting as a leader for today's mission, while the other two brothers follow nearby. When they gather the amount of bamboo they want, the three choose a different direction home, hoping to all find some food for their family for lunch. On the way in the jungle, we witness a way of life in which children interact with nature as if it were their big home, providing them with edible delicacies and entertainment. The brothers walk slowly and quietly to look for the animals in the trees, the numbers of which are decreasing gradually. But it's a lucky day today for these young mannies. They spot some movement in a tree. A green snake is binding a small squirrel for breakfast. Finally, the three succeeded and got hold of the squirrel to take back to the family at home. So yeah man, um, through the spirit, um, that was the first part of the documentary, but if your brother wants to watch the second part, y'all um, can do that, watch it in your own time, but you know, through the spirit, just wanted to bring this out, you know, to edify your brothers and also the, the people that might be watching about, you know, Israel being scattered all over the, the globe, you know, and, you know, um, with that, um, I just like to say, um, you know, just keep pushing the word, you know, we're almost there, and also, um, yeah, I'd uh, like to give all honor and glory and praises again to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, 
Also, double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Also, double honors to all you items that's um, doing the truth and pushing this word in sincerity. Also, double honors to the camp light of the Gentile. Once again, this is al Madad. And, you know, I like to say, Barakat um, Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai. Hope you brothers are edified, you know, on, on that, you know, on certain things from, from this. And, you know, I like to say, Kumya Shrala, Kumya Shrala, Kumya Shrala, Shalom.